it's that time. We put all the snaps on, we paired all the snaps on the trailer that needed to be replaced. And now, I don't know about the weather, it's looking kind of rainy, but we're at least going to unfold the billboard and, and cut it to the right width. So that, yep. you know, three or four feet tall to get up to the snaps. Yep. So, Less work later. Yep. You go down and measure how high that end is, because that's the high end right mm -hmm. now on this campsite. And then I'm going to use that for my maximum length plus about four inches. Um, yep. All the way across. Because right. that end we'll usually ends up getting higher. What's that, bud? That end usually ends up getting higher. All depends on the site you're at. Oh, well, yeah. And there's our billboard. Yep. I wonder what we got this year. I don't know. Last year it was a puppy's carpet, right? Oh, it was like pet proof furniture or something. <laughs> All right. I don't know if those scissors are going to cut it. Yeah, they should be. Okay. Oh, it's a Whole Foods billboard. Mom will be so happy. <laughs> <laughs> How convenient. Yep. Here's the end. That's so cool. I see. Yeah, it looks like we got to unfold it in half. It's still black on the inside? Uh, yeah. Yep, this is like a giant Whole Foods logo. <laughs> Oh, so that's how wide it is. Wow, this is big. <laughs> Bigger than last year's? No, it's pretty much the same size, but... Uh, you forgot how big it is? I just forgot how big it is, yeah. Do you want to move so the table out of the way? Turning okay. sideways. Should we move the table out of the way? No. Okay. That way. Okay. Now, unfold. Would you prefer my help instead of me standing here? Do we need to move the van? Maybe. <laughs> Van. All right, I'll get the case. The nice part about it is there's sort of a weave on it. Oh. And so I can just cut along the weave and know that I'm getting a nice square piece. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a strip for one side, a strip for the other, and the part that's left in the middle we'll use to tailor the ends. I think the... Um, I always give myself an extra... 12 inches over the height I'm going for because I like to fold the top over to create a seam. I'm going to show you that in a little bit. And I like to leave a lot on the ground so that like the snow could pile up on it and really trap the air inside. The, um, what we found last year was, unless you're going to wait till June in the Rockies, you're going to be cutting it out of the ice anyway and leaving it behind. So this is probably going to be a yearly project for us. But that's okay because it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Okay, Jay, come here. Need him to hold? Yeah, just keep it up in the air and keep it tight. It makes me not have to bend down and I can cut nice and straight along these lines. Shaking all the dirt out and stuff? Yep. Cool. Alright, John, we're trying to keep the black off the ground. Pull tight. There you go. And down. So what I like to do is I like to cut one piece using the machine cut edge here so that my cut that's going to hang on the ground can be a little sloppy. It's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. And then I use the other side to do the machine cut edge there. For the other side. That one a little sloppy. And that way I could be off by half an inch or an inch, but that's just the part that's lying on the ground. So it's really not that important. Um, and then I use the machine cut edge to fold over and snap along the trailer. This so now I'm going to roll this up, cut a second piece. And then I'll have two long pieces, which probably be all I need. Cool. And the good thing about having it hanging off of the table is all the little bits of dirt and stuff are going to fall off. Yep. Fall down the slope. Yep. You kind of have to accept the fact that it's going to get dirty. Yeah. Start from there. But you're right. It does help. 
Yep. So I now have two 48 foot long pieces. And since we're 37 feet long and eight feet wide, I should be able to go all the way down and around the corner and then all the way up and around the other corner with just those two pieces, which means I have a lot left over. Now you say, why would I buy something that big? Because in order to get 48 feet long and a single piece, which is gonna insulate the best with this few cracks and seams and things, I had to buy a 14 foot tall billboard and I only need to use about three and a half feet on each end. So now before I start, last year I had to bang with a hammer and a die to get all of these to set and it was pretty uh, pretty intense. This year what I did was I bought this tool, just found it on Amazon, and all I have to do is set it up in the middle like this and squeeze and I'm done. And that was a lot easier. So for the top, I fold it over, I punch a tiny little hole with a knife, and then I'm ready to snap it on. Now I was just doing this for proof of concept to make sure it works. But the nice part about it is that this little area right here tends to puff out and form a really good seal with the uh, trailer. Um, keeps the air from flowing out from inside and out. What I discovered last year was that I built this in the warm weather and I spaced these so that they were exactly one snap width apart. And we got there and because the material was so cold and stiff, I couldn't get it to stretch all the way to the next one. So I'm gonna leave a little bit more mush and you know, have it pop out like that a little bit more. That'll increase the seal. And when the stuff gets stiff and cold, I'll still be able to make it from snap to snap. I also last year spent a lot of time picking it up and working underneath when every time I went to dump the tanks. This year I'm actually gonna build in some snaps so that I have a hatch to work with because getting that big stiff cold tarp to come up all the time and then hold it there while you worked was really challenging. And then the last thing is, last year I used Velcro in order to seal the seams. And in the cold, the adhesive didn't stick very well. So then I put duct tape down and the Velcro stuck very well to the duct tape. Until we got to Colorado. <laughs> and then when I went to seal it up, it did not uh, work very well. In the middle of the winter, the Velcro would just come off. So this year I bought snaps and I'm going to put little seams along here and snap things in. And I'll show you how we do that later. These are the snaps, the base of the snap, that I screwed into the trailer. Now we want a snap fit with screw in snap that was right into this trim panel beautifully. This ring, which you can see right here, combined with this cap is what gets snapped into the tarp. Once these are done, then you can snap this and this together. And that's what we have right here. Now, we're also gonna do something a little bit different on this one. And for that, this part is the same. The ring and the post will still go on the tarp. But also on the tarp, I can put in this post and this ring, and that way I can make pieces of the tops. This post and this ring, and that way I can make pieces of the tarp that can snap up and stay on when I'm working on the sewer or something. So we're gonna try that right now and see how that goes. Gonna have to get my knife out for this part. It'll go a lot faster. <laughs> when you're actually doing it? Scissors don't have a sharp point. This is just my little proof of concept to make sure I'm, things are gonna work the way I think they're gonna work. Please oh. be careful. <laughs> <laughs> We have some young neighbors over there today. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear them yesterday. Mm -hmm. 
got here on Sunday, so maybe homeschoolers or something. Definitely need my knife. You sure you have them facing the right direction? That's why I'm doing one of those practicals first. <laughs> so you can figure out what the right direction yeah. is, huh? Yeah. Thought now is okay. I'll put a little bevel in the top, and then ah, the ability to snap them together down here. Does it work? No, I didn't put it in the right direction. <laughs> I didn't think it looked I'm like it. it. Okay. Snapping together. Yep. Cool. So a couple of key things about measuring. Um, one of them is figure out where your stairs are gonna go and make sure you have additional snaps because you're probably gonna put some slits in here to accommodate this and you want it to be nice and strong. Another possibility to think about is your slides. When I snap this one in here, I'm actually gonna leave enough material to come in, over, and out, and back around to this snap. Now it's not going to be snapped to anything or attached to anything here because it would interfere with the slide as it goes in and out. But it's stiff enough and um, rough enough basically that it's just going to stand up here in the cold and keep most of the air trapped underneath the slide. Some people skip the slides altogether and go across the bottom underneath, but then you've left the floor of the slide exposed and you lose a lot of heat that way. So I like to come out and go around them. All right, so this is the big long piece that we cut the other day. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the back corner over there. Then I'm gonna put the first couple of snaps on and then we're gonna work our way all the way down. Now this year, I'm not doing anything about these stairs. We didn't use them at all last year, so I'm just gonna go right over them. But when we get to these stairs, we're gonna to have to cut a hatch or something so then a couple of slits and put some extra snaps on there so it works really well. Cool. So I'm going to start right here. I'm going to leave a good six inches or so just to come around the corner and make a nice corner seam when I'm done. And I'm going to start, I fold the machine cut edge, not my sloppy cut, over a couple of inches. I stab it with the knife. Carefully. Carefully. And then I put the snap in. With the um, special pliers. So I stick the shiny side of the snap right through the hole mm -hmm. so that the shiny side is out. Yep. And then I put the little magical ring on there. Like so. And then we take our fun special tool. We line it up on the little post. And then... Rush it. Squish. Et voila. Now that that is done, this snaps on. And One down. We're on our way. A bunch more to go. Yep. All right, so we are about, I'd say a third of the way done. It's about halfway done in terms of material, but a third of the way done in terms of work. You can see that we started right here. And we just ran one long continuous piece. Now you may see some buckles in here, but that's intentional because when this freezes in the winter, it's going to be very hard to work with and it'll be too tight unless you have a little bit of slack to work with. Yep. So that's what that's there for. And also things contract when they cool down. Here we have 
a cut down for the door. You want to make sure that nobody trips over it and the door doesn't rip when it comes open and close. Now I'm not putting the stairs out for this one, but I am for the other one and I'll show you that in a moment. When you get to the slides on the corner here, I left a lot of extra material to go around and close this gap. Now I may put some blue tape on it or something like that just to hold it in place or maybe a cheap curtain rod from Amazon to hold it in place and keep that gap closed. But we'll figure that out when we get there. That's not too big of a deal. Now you see all this extra material lying on the ground. I don't care. I'll tuck it underneath the RV, fold it under, and then when the spring comes and it's all frozen into the ground, which is what's going to happen anyway, I'll just cut it out with a knife and they can get it in July. Yep. <laughs> Like they said that they have to do all the time. Yep. Now up here, around this door, same thing. I came down low, but as you can see I put an extra fold in here. See, so why would I do that? Because I'm going to cut a slit here for the stairs to come out, and I need extra material for these to overlap and snap together. So I'll put that extra bit of a fold there, and over here, and I'll be working on that next. All of this was one straight run. Wait up. All the way up to here. And I brought it right around the front, and I'm probably going to do the same thing on that side, and then cut a special piece to go right here. Cool. And voila. We have skirted. Anyways, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss another video.